course. Yes, my name is Eduardo Herrera. I am an associate professor at Rutgers University. And I was attracted to, music to ethnomusicology uh, in a class. I was taking a class with Thomas Torino while I was doing my master's. And uh, I was learning so much about Latin American music. And uh, I was kind of like in shock of how little I actually knew. Being myself Latin American, I was born uh, in Colombia and realizing that there was a lot that I could uh, learn from this course that I, didn't, I wasn't really expecting. So I, I started getting into the methodologies and fell in love with it. And uh, yeah, here I am 15 years later. <laughs> I went to the University of Illinois and it, it was a fantastic experience. It was, there was a lot of luck involved because growing up in Colombia, uh, we didn't know much about what programs were strong or weak uh, for you know, for musicology in general or ethnomusicology, you just didn't know. Um, but I had a, a good idea that I wanted to study, or, or what about what I wanted to study. And um, Illinois happened to have you know a very good uh, ethnomusicology number of a number of ethnomusicology professors at that time. So it was great because I never expected to live in a small city like Champaign Urbana. And I grew up in a huge city, so this was a big change, but it was actually a very productive change for me. Uh, I got in very close touch with the local music scene, with the other graduate students. I was fortunate enough to uh, socialize and uh, have intellectual discussions with people from my cohort, but also from older cohorts. Uh, and that is something that I really appreciated about being in that small Midwestern town. Um, I don't know, the impact is, is huge. I mean, you, you start, uh, from there going to regional conferences and meeting people from other Midwestern schools. Uh, and I created some of my first you know, colleagues slash friends and uh, relationships. And uh, yeah, it was, it, it was uh, a, a very good, good experience overall, yeah. Well, right now I'm working on a uh, project involving soccer chants and uh, fandom in Argentina mostly, although I'm starting to expand to other parts of the world uh, to understand a little bit about uh, the, the potentials that sound brings into the equation of large numbers of people singing, chanting, uh, saying things. I'm particularly interested in relationships with masculinity, uh, violence, uh, homophobia, xenophobia, things uh, along those lines, and seeing what are things that uh, these feelings that we understand music creates of, of engagement with others, of belonging to others, uh, belonging to, another, to a larger group, uh, and kind of losing ourselves into that, how it can have like a, a darker side that might be represented here. Um, at the same time, I also look at the positives that this could bring and, and kind of like what are paths that we could uh, take in terms of fandom in, in mass sports to um, create a more positive and, and perhaps uh, much more uh, rewarding type of masculinity. Recently, an article of mine came out in Ethnomusicology in 2018 um, about this particular topic of soccer chants. And it is actually very rewarding because it's an article that not only I have assigned, but other friends of mine and, and people I know have assigned to undergraduates. And it really has connected with them because they all have their own stories about their sports that they like and or activities that they engage with where there's this kind of uh, sounding together with others. And they really connect to that. Uh, so I was very surprised that it was a, a complete unexpected result of this. But it was really rewarding because sometimes uh, I feel that uh, students really think that ethnomusicology can only talk about music. And if they don't know that music, then they really don't know. But here they understood, hey, mu sound is part of all this experience. And I've been part of this kind of like mass sounding events uh, my whole life. So it, that was kind of like a, it's been a very good thing in my career so far. Well, um, I think that for m most people that at some point get to the PhD, <laughs> the finishing a dissertation was very satisfying. Um, not not the just the one moment where you are like done, but it's a whole process that overall, you know, there's pains and um, uh, suffering or but at the same time, it was, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and having finished that product, and uh, now that a book will come out with those uh, results, uh, that particular project has to do with uh, people that engaged uh, with the avant-garde experimental music scene in Argentina in the 60s. 
uh, and I took it into a mix of historical and ethnographic approach. Uh, and it was very interesting to work with these people who are now in their late 70s, early 80s, and uh, trying to understand why were the reasons that they found themselves attracted to this particular music. I worked with people that were funding this music and trying to see why were people giving money to this music. Well, very often they didn't like the music, uh, but they were still giving money towards the music, and that was very interesting. And especially knowing that a lot of these uh, older people were not necessarily in the radar of, of uh, classical music making, which in this particular case was uh, their musical tradition. And this for them was kind of like uh, rewarding in its own sense. It was, it was uh, nice for them to know that they were paying attention, they were being paid attention to. Uh, it was great for me to learn from them, uh, take the opportunity to, to you know, engage with this particular musical tradition that is all around us, especially in, in academia. You know, there's so many, so much emphasis in classical music sometimes, uh, but it's rarely studied just as that, as one more musical tradition taking place and how people feel about it is felt very important. So that was rewarding. When I teach my courses, both for undergrad um, music majors or non-music majors, I almost inevitably end with a conclusion. This is normally the introductory course they take sometimes the only course they take that has to do with anything of, uh, you know, that examines music from an anthropological perspective. Um, and I tell them that to me, ethnomusicology allows us to see uh, both extremes that can be very dangerous. The extremes of thinking that we're so unique that others are just so different, right? And, uh, but of course there's uniqueness in us. And then the other extreme is uh, we're all the same which is not true, unfortunately, right? We are not, we live life and we have different issues. We all have different you know, um, advantages, disadvantages, privileges, um, all sorts of things that are into play. And ethnomusicology allows us to see that, that, that common shared experience, but at the same time that unique and that difference, which uh, I feel that even for the students that are there for uh, elective in chemistry, their, their major is chemistry and they're just taking the elective, they leave, and I don't think they were expecting to learn a little bit about that, but they leave and they, they feel that they understand a little bit more of that issue that humans have, uh, that aspect of human experience that is complicated. We are the same, but also we are very different. Well, I think that, I mean, what we're experiencing yeah. right now is an important part of, of being an ethnomusicologist, which is we are part of a community. We're uh, not a big community. You, as you can see, there's you know only a couple of thousand people. Um, but uh, that community is actually something that I value very much. Uh, it's having conversations with people that um, are, in the large majority, are concerned with the people they work with and to help and, and to uh, do something for the people they work with by this little window that we call music, right? Like approaching those materials from this little space of music. So I, I think that uh, the fact that we have this society and the fact that uh, more and more the society is less uh, needing to be solely about ethnography, but it has, you know, there's a very thorough historical aspect to our society. There's also ethnography. There's, you know, people that are working in oral histories. There are people that are working in policy. So it's almost like a misnomer, it, like, but, but the, 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 the common denominator is still there, and it's, I, I think it's a very important part of our profession.